Hey everyone, what's going on? Sam Farnsworth here with uh, KSL Channel 5 along with Trevor Allen, who's uh, in the safe confines of his home. He's uh, obviously our, our um, uh, Crimson Corner host and uh, one of our contributors at kslsports.com. But welcome to KSL Sports front page. This is going to become a regular thing. We've already been doing it for a while, but it's going to become a regular thing. And it's brought to you by University Federal Credit Union. So we want to thank them and thank you guys for joining us and uh, tuning in for us as we kind of navigate through what's on the front page of kslsports.com and some of the big headlines that we've been talking about as a company at KSL. But we know that these are headlines that a lot of you guys have been talking about out there public as well. So we want to hit on some of those. And we've got a really cool thing that's coming up that Trevor is going to talk a little bit about. We'll have that coming up a little bit later on as well. But you don't want to miss it. If you're a Utah fan, if you're a big Utah football fan, this is going to be awesome. You don't want to miss this. So, but let's get started off, uh, Trevor. We're just going to, you know, let's hit hit the the head, the lead story, the headline story here on uh, KSLSports.com right now, which is this one you see on your screen. The NCAA board supports name, image, and likeness compensation. This has been something that's been in conversations and debates for quite a while, Trevor. I mean, uh, talking about how we can get college athletes paid. Uh, they've been, you know, it's been a discussion for several, several years how they can do it. I think this is the first step and the most, the step that probably makes the most sense in going that direction to getting some more compensation for college athletes. What do you think? I mean, a lot of us are thinking what took so long for that to happen, right? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing some college athletes, you know, some former or some youths that are going into their senior year tweeting, I wish you guys would have done this earlier. You know, it sucks that I'm, I'm just going to miss out on it. But it's one of those things where it, it had to happen eventually. And it was just a matter of when were they finally going to, uh, you know, finally cave in and allow this to happen. But also, Sam, keep in mind, that means that we're getting closer to bringing back those college football video games and college yes. basketball video games. So it's time to uh, time time to dust off the uh, paddles for uh, you know playing video games for your Xbox and things like that. And because because that that was the major hurdle for that. But really, of what it does, it it now makes it to where it's easier for college athletes to live by. And I know a lot of a lot of people are saying, well, they they've already been on scholarship, they're getting free schooling, but. I mean, from what talking to, to some of these athletes, they don't get a ton of money for, you know, other living, you know, things to live, you know, like as far as your your, your room and board right. and meals and things like that. And so I think it, it's just, you know, especially a step where of what the NBA is doing right now in basketball is they're, you know, have, bringing the, the, the G League to where guys can come in, play a year there and then go into the NBA draft rather than going to college basketball. So for me, I think it's definitely the, the step in the right direction. But I think right now they're having to compete, at least as far as basketball goes, with the uh, G League. Yeah, and, and that's obviously one of the recent hot topics is what the G League is able to do for high school athletes that uh, think they're, you know, one step away, one year away from an NBA career. Um but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously bringing the video games back is awesome for us fans. We love that because I, I don't know about you. I spent several hours <laughs> on college football uh, trying to create Heisman winners and yep. and lead uh, different college teams to national championship stuff. So that was a lot of fun. But going back to one of the things you brought up, you know, uh, yeah, they are on scholarship. A lot of these athletes are as well as a lot of students. But those students uh, can still go out and make money however they 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 want and maybe my you know uh, people people are not going to like my argument but uh, my my take is that you know playing a college sport is easily a full time job on top of academics and school and the amount of time you have to put into that so yes they compensate with a scholarship but they can't go out and make any other money on top of that I mean some guys do they go out and get job stuff but uh, to me it makes sense that they should be allowed to own their own likeness, right? And, and to, instead of the NCAA making so much money off it. So I like this step. I think, it, I think it makes complete sense. A guy wins the Heisman Trophy as a junior or a sophomore and wants to go out and get some endorsement deals. Why not? You know, uh, it's his talent. He's an amazing athlete. Why not? So I think the NCAA is, is making a good uh, first step in that direction. And maybe that's the only step they'll have to take. We'll have to see how this plays out over time. But Interesting. So that's our top story on KSLSports.com. I think one of the most fun stories, though, that we've got coming out now, uh, Jeremiah Jensen helped put a lot of this together, as well as got a lot of feedback from our entire KSL Sports team. How about this one here? You see here uh, the bracket for best classic logos from Utah sports history. I love this. He sent out a list, Jeremiah did, of 
all these old logos that uh, our, our sports department was able to dig up and put together. And, um, and now it's going to become a bracket. Which classic logos from the past would you love to see come back or is your favorite of all time? And when he was asking for nominations, I had a couple right off the top of my head. I love the old Buzz logo you see on, on the graphic here. I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of the Goals logo, the old Salt Lake Goals baseball team. But some of these other logos that he had in here, when they popped up, I was like, wow, I didn't. Like, one of my favorites that we don't see on the graphic that you'll have to check out in the, uh, oh, here it is. Here is the bracket. Um, so you've got the goals and the Dixie State there. Uh, you know, the old, the, the, I guess they call this the BYU Beat Digger. That's what some of the guys have said. I never heard that growing up, but no, there's the, the, the BYU Beat Digger. All like sounds. But one of my favorites, I'm just going to show you right here as I scroll down through all these great logos. People love the BYU Sailor logo. Uh, I love this old classic Thin U with uh, the drum and feather. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that one. Uh, but one of my favorites that popped up here as we roll down here. Now, am I missing it? The Snow Badger. Did I miss that one? Uh, that one. I know I know you uh, tweeted about it, and I, I'm trying to look for it right now. There it is. Oh, it's right there. It's yeah, right there. there it is. Yeah, so, they're, they're taking on the Ogden Raptors. The Snow Badger. I love that look. I've, I've never seen that before, but I absolutely <laughs> love it. I think that is such a classic and great look. And uh, you as viewers and followers of kslsports.com and KSL Sports Facebook and Twitter and all of our social media outlets, you get the chance to come and vote on which, which one's your favorites, and we'll advance it on just like a normal bracket. But uh, uh, I think this is one, a really fun way to get involved in sports when a lot of sports isn't going on, and it's a fun way to uh, look back at some of the great uniforms or logos that we've had too. When I was when I was growing up, Sam, and you know, one, one of the logos that, that really stood out to me was, was the Utah Freeze, that indoor soccer team. That would uh, that would play games at the at the Maverick Center. I used to mm -hmm. go to those games when I was younger, just because it, it was it was one of those cheap tickets. So you can go and check yeah. it out. And I, I kind of wanted to see what you know indoor soccer was like that wasn't <laughs> at the rec level. And so to kind of see that logo kind of br brings back memories. But I also like that that skinny USU logo, the one that is going up against the uh, Stingers, the uh, down towards the bottom of the bracket. I think that that's a pretty cool logo as well. And then SUU. Uh, yeah, uh, no, the uh, USU one. Oh, the, US, oh, right here. Yeah, that, yeah, right there. yeah. Um, and then another one oh, that not. is really, really cool is the uh, Stars logo from uh, the uh, the uh, Utah Stars with the with the bull horns there. I the know, USU I logo. know that uh, right Matt, Matt Matt Glade was a big fan of that. He he also tweeted out yeah. the logo said that there's really not much of a a debate which one's the best. But just going through this, it, it kind of just it's really cool to see the history. Like obviously I'm I'm a big yeah. fan of the, the Mountain Jazz logo. Um I have been, you know, that was that was my my heyday of following Utah Jazz basketball. And so this is a really cool bracket and yeah. I would definitely encourage those to go vote. Yeah, go vote. Let, let your voice be heard and we'll have fun with this and, and we'll incorporate it in all of our uh, platforms as well, including on sports. Yeah, you know, the, the stars logo here that we're looking at and then the other one that you brought up, the freeze logo. I mean, these are a couple of logos that uh, were in that time period here in Utah when everything had to end in double Z after the jazz. Right. So you had yep. the jazz, the buzz started. And I don't think the buzz was necessarily intentional, but once you had the, the jazz grizzly, and the buzz, the freeze, yeah. the grizz, the freeze, the stars, everyone had that double Z ending. So almost all of those logos are in here as well. Uh, one of the classic ones that we love is the uh, golden Eagles. Um, and they had an old, I mean, you've got this golden Eagles logo here. Mm-hmm. But there's also one that I was not very familiar with until I saw all these coming out, which is right here. And this is great. This is like an old uh, it, 1960s oh, or man, 70s awesome. cartoon, you know, yeah. uh, the, the green golden eagles. I, I love it. So that's a pretty fun one, too. But, yeah, uh, jump on there, caselsports.com, find our bracket, click on the ones you want to see advance. You can see the vote totals. Some of them are, you know, 55 to 44, 51 to 48. Uh, it's close voting so far. So get in there. Cast your vote for your favorite logo, which one you would love to see come back. And it's going to be fun to go through that. Um, all right. So let's move. Let's move on. One of our other uh, sub headlines here. Uh, we'll, we'll hit on a little bit because this is super interesting. Former Ute quarterback Alex Smith uh, and everything that he's been through. We're learning more and more about it from his injury with the Washington Redskins that we know was just a gruesome injury that ended his career. Or what, I shouldn't say that. It's not over. Ended his season. I did not mean to say that. I slipped. Close, my yeah. tongue slipped there. <laughs> ended his season, but nearly ended his ended his career and even nearly ended his life. These are bits of information that we didn't fully know until after uh, all this process and. 
Uh, now ESPN is going to reveal a lot of it in, a, in their E60 series coming up to talk a little uh, more about just this whole process, this just gruesome and terrifying process that Alex Smith had to go through. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of it, Sam, is interesting because certain things have come out, you know, within the last year about, you know, the the progress that Alex is making. And and something that is so incredible is I've, I've actually written, you know, a, a, a couple of stories because, you know, on our site, we're, you know, trying to track how Alex Smith is doing. And he's had to have like 17 surgeries. There was one where he, he was he was a put out for, you know, a while and then woke up just enough to to uh, tell the doctor whether he wants his leg saved or, you know, for him to be able to amputate it. And, and Alex told him to save it. And, you know, it's just one of those things where, and then then he ends up going into shock because of, you know, some of the infections that were going through and just to see the way that they ended up putting his leg back together. Not only one, is it impressive that his leg is still together, but that he's still alive and that he could come back and play football again. It's just, it blows my mind. Yeah, it, it's a wild story. So they're going to dive into that, uh, and and we'll obviously be following along and and uh, hopefully learning more about this process that Alex had to go through. I'll tell you what, I I saw him down at the Alamo Bowl. Uh, he was one of the honorary captains throwing the coin uh, along with Colt McCoy for Texas. So those two were the honorary captains out there at midfield before the Alamo Bowl between the Utes and and Texas and. Uh, and, you know, he he looked great. He looked good walking around, and I'm just sitting there thinking in my head, man, that leg. Uh, I, I you know, I wonder how it is. I hope we're going to see him back on the field soon because this is you know one of those injuries that you just don't see a lot of athletes recover from, and not only just recover from, but get back into their competitive sport again. So, I personally. I really want to see Alex Smith back on an NFL football field again and not just see him out there to take a few snaps. I want to see him out there and I want to see him succeed and, and, and do well, you know, because um, what a story, you know, he's already been through. It would be great to see him get back to what he loves and to uh, have a successful finish to, to his career, a finish that maybe he can be pleased with, you know. Um, but uh, Trevor, let me ask you about this because Alex was a part of a great University of Utah football team in 2004. And this is what we want to talk about. Let me pop up this uh, logo I've got here. We're calling it the Great Ute Debate, which uh, which is coming up. And and you've kind of thrown this together, Trevor, and you're going to be moderating this. Talk a little bit about how uh, what, what Utah football fans can look forward to. This is going to be pretty awesome. So coming up tomorrow at 11 a.m. Mountain Time on this this page and also actually uh, on, on both these pages because we're streaming this on, on the Facebook and, and on the YouTube pages mm-hmm. for KSL Sports. Uh, I'm going to be joined by a couple of uh, four legends who have who, who were on some great Utah football teams. And uh, we're going to try and figure out which Utah football team is the greatest of all time. I know I know that people have asked because they're they are two teams who, who went you know undefeated and and uh, busted the BCS and. Yep. Um, you know, just great teams, but then you also look at how much talent was on those teams. And so, uh, from, from the 2004 team, we're going to have, uh, Eric Weddle, who, who was an all American, uh, DB. And then, you know, was kind of that, a uh, Swiss army knife towards the end of his career. Right. He'll be joined, but he'll be, he'll be teaming up with, uh, Quinton Ganther, one of the running backs, oh, yeah. uh, in, uh, on that 2004 team. And then they'll be debating against Brian Johnson, who was the sugar bowl, most valuable player along with our guy Sly Stevenson Sylvester he'll be uh, joining us uh, from that uh, on that linebacker uh, core where uh, you know he he actually had three and a half sacks in, in that in that entire 2008 season Sam three yeah. of them came against Alabama oh man so I'll tell you what I, I remember a lot of games from that 04 team I uh, that was back in the day when I was actually working here uh, as uh, an assistant sports producer and so I saw a lot of the Utah games and I you know, Alex Smith was a huge part of their, their success story as well. But I cannot forget all of the great plays that Eric Weddle was a part of on both sides when he'd come in as that Wildcat quarterback and just mm-hmm. you couldn't stop him. And then on defense, I mean, Eric Weddle was amazing. So it's going to be awesome to have him on. Recently retired Eric Weddle, uh, a guy that should, in my opinion, definitely be considered uh, in, in Hall of Fame conversations in the in the Pro Football Hall of Fame after his great NFL career. But Man, it all started at the U where he had just a phenomenal career with Coach uh, Urban Meyer. Um, so it's going to be fun to hear his side. And then I, for me, that 08 team, I was living in Colorado. I didn't get to see a lot of that Utah 08 team play, but I did watch that Sugar Bowl game. And I couldn't help but think after the way they played against Alabama was 
How did this team not get a chance to prove that they could be the number one team in the nation? How did that 08 team not get a shot at uh, at a at a title? Obviously, we didn't have a playoff system set up yet then, but that's one of those great arguments uh, for uh, a playoff system, whether you're a fan of four teams or bigger. Um, Utah's a big reason why both of those seasons, 04 and 08, are a big reason why college football now has this uh, – uh, four team playoff and potentially going to be expanding from there. So I can't wait to hear it, uh, Trevor. Yep, it's tomorrow. Remind us again tomorrow at eleven. And yep, where can our 11. viewers, where can our viewers watch that again? So right here on the KSL Sports Facebook and YouTube pages is where you can find it. And we're just going to have a lot of fun, kick back, you know, talk about some memories. But you know, as, as you brought that up, Sam, about you know hoping that to you know you were really hoping that the uh, 2008 team could see if if they could win the the yeah. national championship. I've actually gone back at, you know, prepping for this because, you know, it's been 12 or, you know, 16 years, depending on, on, on what you're <laughs> talking about since these games have happened. Right. And I, I went back and I watched the uh, the the uh, 2004 uh, game against Pitt in yeah. the in, in that bowl game. And then I also uh, am, am almost done. I haven't quite finished the uh, Sugar Bowl game, but both mm-hmm. in, the, in the, both those broadcasts have brought up if, if Utah could compete against teams out of the Big Ten, out of the Big 12. And things like that and a lot of the analysts in those games said yes that they absolutely could especially in 2004 could really compete in those conferences and i i, I also think it opened up the door to get utah in in uh, out of the mountain west conference and definitely. into the pac 12. no it definitely was a huge a, a huge role in in why they're in the pac 12 now and uh, i'll tell you what I, if i remember right the final ap poll they had 20 or so first place votes even you know so uh Mm-hmm. Um, that was a strong cry for a playoff as well to let it be determined on the football field. All right. So um, looking forward to that. A uh, lot of great stories that you can hit on KSL uh, You know, NFL agents uh, speaking about representing those late players. We get a lot of those every year out of our state uh, guys who sign as undrafted players um, and, and what their future uh, holds for them. Jeremy Moss, one of our, uh, KSL News Radio uh, producers and contributors to KSLSports.com wrote something up on that. You can check that one out. Another one that I really liked, Ben Anderson wrote yesterday. Let's scroll down here. Mike Conley talks. He was part of the great Twitter takeover that the NBA did, so he took over the NBA Twitter account uh, for a, a little while there and was able to talk about his time in Memphis. He was talking about his horse challenge, winning the horse challenge again. He said basically that it was uh, fun for him to just be able to compete with a basketball in his hands again. Um, but he also at the very, you want it, you want to get through the whole article because at the very end he talks about, and I won't spoil it because I want you guys to check it out, but he talks about his thoughts on, uh, Salt Lake city and his thoughts on Memphis. And I don't know that he compares the two, but he, uh, he tells, um, he gives his thoughts on what it's like being in Salt Lake city and what he likes about it, uh, living here. And, uh, I'll, I'll have you guys, uh, go ahead and click on at castlesports.com to that story and you can find out. Uh, in fact, I will, uh, let me see. I think I can pa- paste it into the comments here. Right there. There it is for your uh, reading pleasure. Check it out, guys. Uh, it's really cool, though. Um, just being able to hear from jazz players right now when we don't get to hear from them that much uh, during this time of year. Um, so looking forward to that. But a lot of great stuff on KSLSports.com. You can read all Trevor stuff there. You can still catch episodes of Crimson Corner at KSLSports.com as well. And then reminder again tomorrow, the great Ute debate. Can't wait. All right, this is the, the KSL Sports front page. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to come to you at a, a regular basis. I believe it's Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It could be more than that. But uh, but you'll want to tune in here to KSL Sports Facebook page and YouTube pages for this regular uh run through of the headlines so trevor thanks buddy it's good seeing you and good talking to you sam it's always good to talk to you i'll, I'll see you on my on my tv tonight at uh, six and ten perfect all right guys thanks for tuning in